life-changing experience because uh, it clearly I wouldn't be where I am now without the university. Uh, but it's more than that. I really had a great time. Uh, I developed as an individual. Uh, I'll tell you why in a minute. I did all my schooling in Sri Lanka. I was there until I was 19. And then I did all my education in Tamil, which is a different language. And then I had an opportunity, I got a scholarship to come to Cambridge. And I came to Cambridge to do my undergraduate. A uh, big change in my life, never been abroad. Uh, first time out of the country uh, to come and study here in a different language. Um, so I came and then I did my undergraduate Then they gave me another scholarship to stay and do my PhD. I did my PhD and then came to Bristol. thing I've done in my life. So one, because I was in a new country, um, speaking a different language. Well, I could speak a bit of broken English, but I was never fully conversant. Uh, and I did them all my education in Tamil, so all the technical terms were in Tamil. So I came to Cambridge and the first few lectures I had no clue what was going on. And the terms I didn't understand, and the accent I didn't understand, uh, and I didn't have many people like because I come from a different culture so I didn't really make good friends with my uh, in the class of 300 or probably about 30 overseas students so there was not many opportunities to make friends so it was quite a tough experience uh, I didn't do well in my first year I got a 2-2 um, whereas given that I was coming from a well, with a scholarship the expectations were very high but I knew that was a tough one so in my first year I got a 2-2, partly because the education system is different. So I didn't really understand how you prepare for the exams in this country. And then second year I got first. And then I realized, okay, this is how I need to prepare. And by the time I got used to the technical terms, um, settled into the system. Uh, but it was a tough experience. Uh, but I do a lot of other things, like I like to do sports. That's one of the reasons I got the scholarship, because I was not just... Uh, good in my education, I did a lot of sports, um, interested in drama and stuff like that. So when I came to Cambridge, I was able to get involved in other activities through which I could make friends. So that helped me to integrate much quicker than somebody else who didn't do that. Um, but it was, uh, I would say it was one of the hardest things I've done. But I'm very grateful I did it, but I went through quite a difficult period trying to see whether I'm doing the right thing, I'm going to be a complete failure, everybody's going to look at me and say, look, what well, this guy came to the scholarship and really not doing well in Cambridge. But then I realised I was not the only one. There are a lot of people who do very well in school, don't necessarily do well in Cambridge either. Just work hard. Just work hard. Uh, being an international student, I didn't have anywhere to go to during the holidays. So I would stay in the university throughout the year. So during the holidays, there's one of my friends are around, so all I can do is do a bit of odd, few odd jobs, and then I would study and just catch up with all the things. So I have to do a lot more work than anybody else. say I think one of the best things that uh, my children could do is go and live abroad for a year or two years. It makes you hard, it makes you tough because it's really emotionally uh, it's quite difficult and you ask a lot of questions about yourself uh, and my parents uh, because there were no phones when I came here so I couldn't I won't get any contact with my family for months so once in a while I'll get a letter and it takes about three months for the letter to come to Cambridge, to England. So every morning I'll go and check the pigeonhole and see if there's a letter for me. So that's what I look forward to that. Get up, have my breakfast and I'll go to the pigeonhole. And you get real disappointed when there is no letter. But that's what you look forward to. Um, so it's hard. And I couldn't go back home for holidays because uh, the situation was not very safe back in the country. So I only went after I finished my undergraduate after four years. So I would say it is very hard, but if you do it, it makes you tough. You need to be adaptable. Um, you need to understand cultures, 
differently. So for example, the language for me when I first came, piece of cake, cup of tea, didn't make any sense, but you just get used to it. I think, okay, and, and there are cultural. I'll give you one example. In Sri Lanka, when you, uh, and he's a good friend of mine, by the way, he's one of my good friends, uh, Steve Palmer, he played, he was the only professional footballer who had a degree from Cambridge. Uh, he played for Ipswich and then he became player manager for Watford. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, when he was in the university, uh, he moved to, in the, every year you moved to a new room. So he went, in my, in my first year I got to know he was my lab partner. Second year he moved to the next room. Uh, and I said, I'll come and see you, Steve. He said, why? I said, you moved to a new room. He said, oh, we don't do that. I didn't invite you. So I just had to understand there's a different cultural norms, whereas in Sri Lanka you would just visit somebody. So things like that was difficult. But other than that, it wasn't difficult. So the most difficult one was when I didn't do well in my first year. I was really hard and as I said I didn't have anybody else to talk to. My family was back home. So I thought, oh, this is not going well. Um, and what are we going to do? Um, but as I said, then I put the effort in uh, to improve. And clearly the most uh, incredible moment for me was getting my PhD completed as well. And then the other uh, exciting moment is when I became a professor in this university. Because was, that was my, I didn't plan to be here in this place. Uh, my only thing was to finish my studies and then I would like teaching, I like doing research, so I want to be in a university, as a university academic and then if you're an academic, the career objective is to become a professor. So for me, that was a key achievement after that. These opportunities that came my way, I didn't plan for it. Insecure, you feel lonely. Uh, that's not necessarily insecure, but emotionally it's hard. Um, so I didn't have any girlfriends when I was at university. And there weren't many Sri Lankan girls that I fancied. Um, so it's quite lonely uh, and wondering what's happening. I think my lab partner Steve was very good. He really helped me. Uh, as I said, initially he didn't, we didn't connect, but later he became a very good friend of mine. Um, and he would kind of help me to settle in and uh, help me integrate. So for example, if there are things like technical terms that I'm struggling with, he will try and explain, or even when we're doing the lab, lab sessions, he'll be a bit patient and sort of work with me. So I would say he's a good friend in that sense, and uh, I would necessarily say he encouraged, but it helped. Other than that, I had a good group of the people who did the course with me, we all got on well. So I think there's general support, but I wouldn't pick out, other than Steve, I don't think I would pick out one individual as somebody who encouraged me. But I don't think anybody discouraged me. Look where you got to. <laughs> Didn't expect. Uh, even when I came to, went to England, okay, uh, came to university here, I didn't know that was ever going to be possible. I always, and even now I tell my children, I have to sometimes speak to myself and say, is this the same person who lived in Sri Lanka that many years ago? I can't. So I was telling them this week, I, I was with James Blunt when he came to I already grew up and I told my children. I say, I never imagined that I would be sitting and having lunch with him. And like that, I meet very senior people in government, ministers, I meet with them, and I just sometimes have to tell myself. So you cannot predict what the future is going to be. The only thing I would say is that makes the most, make the most of all the opportunities you can. You never know when they'll be, they'll become handy.